Uh, my name is Gregory Spears, and I'm writing the music for the opera The Righteous. I'm Tracy K. Smith. I'm a poet, and I wrote the libretto for The Righteous. This story is a retelling or reconsidering of the story of David from the Bible, um, set in the 70s to 90s church communities in southwestern America. As David gets caught up in local politics, his connection to God is weakened by his worldly ambition. And this is a time when um, the AIDS crisis and uh, the, the war on drugs and the rise of feminism is very much front and center in American discourse. We're interested in the ways that genuine faith and actual power uh, inform and change one another. We're interested in the role of um, politics in religion, the role of women in the church. One of the things I love so much about Tracy's libretto is the way that it moves from these very quickly moving um, uh, ensemble scenes, essentially, where there's lots of conversation, you know, almost overlapping text because it, it, it's moving so quickly. And to be able to get a sense of that reality is something that's very um, exciting to me as an opera composer. And then to really shift into a different gear, to really go into this melody-driven world of aria. I think of it as very much an aria-driven opera where we, where we can really hear these moments. I think anybody who grew up reading the Bible has an affinity for the Psalms. They're so intimate, so beautiful, so vulnerable. And so my way of interpreting that was to choose a form that's based on repetition. Um, the villanelle is the form that I chose for the Psalms. Um, certain lines repeat over and over again, and they also turn or tilt. Um, and in this work, it allows us to think about change, evolution, and also contradiction. One of the things that continually fascinates me about opera is something that's inherent to the form. There's a certain kind of duality. And what I mean by that is we have two worlds that are sort of working uh, side by side. There's the world of uh, the play, if you will, the, the world of the characters, a sort of realistic world, in this case, depicting the 1980s. And then there's this other world, this, this more abstract world of music swirling around that world, structuring that world. And this, um, this duality inherent in opera, sometimes it leads to people asking the question, do the characters hear the music, right? Do they know that they're singing? Or is that hidden world around them so ubiquitous that, um, that they don't hear it. We only, we get the full picture as the audience. And so this larger question about the, the, the medium of opera becomes a certain kind of like religious question for these characters. They're trying to connect with something um, outside of themselves. They're trying to make contact with an unseen world. And, um, and so that aspect of opera that's inherent to the form becomes a sort of storytelling technique um, uh, in response to what Tracy's written and the journeys that these characters are taking. I hope what you feel, either through interest or um, worry or recognition with these characters, is that there's a piece of you um, out there that's um, in play. Having this piece be, be at the Santa Fe Opera is, is, is really exciting. Having this piece work in counterpoint between the characters in their world on stage, the music uh, in, in the pit, and of course their singing, and, uh, and the audience, and then this truly beautiful evocation of the sublime surrounding the opera house. To me, um, I'm, I'm excited to to, to think about that counterpoint and how it might serve the story that Tracy has written. To be able to tell this story, which has so much to do with place and land, and in some ways the large scale mythic view that America has of itself, to be able to enact this, this work on a stage where the landscape is also a character, I think is really um, exciting and important.